Live Live. Prime Minister John Brasenio explains government's proposal to appoint Moises Cal as chair of the Public Service Commission. Commissioner of Police Chester Williams addresses the state of violence in Lake Independence. And former Minister of Works René Montero returns to Belize. Will he be arraigned on a criminal charge? These stories and more are coming up on News 5 Live. I'm always on the go and the country is my home. So when I want to get away from it all, I immerse myself with my favorite movies, all from the new Smart Stream app. It's easy to use this service. Purchase your movies from the app and use your mobile data, Smart Stream data packages or Smart Broadband to stream and enjoy. Be like me and stream on the go with Smart Stream. Brands you know and trust, like Kohler. Welcome, GE Appliances. Welcome, Oran Windows. Welcome, tiles from around the world. Welcome. Sherwin-Williams Paint and Coating. Visit us today at Mile 3 on the Philip Golden Highway or call us at 223-3768. Design Depot. All in one place. Todo beliceño merece tener una conexión de internet de calidad, rápida y confiable en su hogar. Para clases en línea y trabajo desde casa, es la nueva forma de vida. DigiNet es el proveedor número uno de servicio de fibra óptica, impulsando la transición digital de Belice. Y ahora nuestro servicio de DigiNet es aún más accesible con nuestro nuevo plan de entrada. Por tiempo limitado, tú y tu familia pueden disfrutar de 20 megabits por segundo por solamente 49 dólares mensuales. No más clases perdidas ni reuniones virtuales interrumpidas. Te está costando mucho tiempo y dinero. DigiNet es mejor que cualquier opción de cable o servicio inalámbrico. Visita cualquier Digistore hoy y suscríbete para la conexión más rápida y confiable de Internet para el hogar en Belice. Ven a ver lo que te has estado perdiendo. El mismo servicio de fibra de alta calidad, rápido y confiable, ahora a un precio aún más bajo. Para más información visita www.livedigi.com diagonal DigiNet. Digi, nuestra telecomunicación nacional. To vote for your favorite contestant, smart users will text the number of votes followed by a space and the contestant's number and send to smart code 5885. Each vote costs 50 cents. Voting ends on Sunday at midnight. to you by the Belize Bank Limited. Our country, your bank. Good evening. Welcome to News 5 Live for Wednesday, July 27th. I am Anlin Opolonio. The government of Belize has made a proposal for Moises Cal to sit on the Public Service Commission as chairman. Back in 2007, under the Musa administration, Cal, in his capacity as ambassador to Guatemala, was accused of money laundering and he was being investigated by authorities in Panama after he 
after they found a million dollars in his possession. As we reported, President of the Public Service Union, Dean Flowers, has objected to the proposed appointment. Opposition leader Shine Barrow also criticized Prime Minister John Brasenio for the proposition, while bringing into question Cal's ethical and moral character. PM Brasenio responded to the backlash in an interview with reporters this morning. Well, I think we need to start off by it's no other than the um, leader of the opposition is always asking for a second chance. And um, we all make mistakes in life, and it's not something that then you should, you can reform your life. And um, whether um, uh, Mr. Carl did or did not know, it was allegations, it has never been proven. Um, in, in court, he was never arrested. Um, so um, he, I believe, um, has been uh, an active citizen in, in Belize, in, in, in Belmopan, and has been, um, I believe, a good citizen. He is always helping, assisting people. Many people don't know this, but um, helping poor people. Um, for Christmas, he helps several families with food and children. So I believe that he had um, the, the qualities to be able to handle the public, um, to be the chair of the Public Service Commission. Now, there have been raising concerns, a number of people have been raising concerns, um, and then others, people from within the public service. So it is something that we have taken, we will take a, a closer look. Um, it has not been sent to the, to the Governor General. Um, so it is, we will take a look, we will listen. We don't believe that we have all the answers. And so um, we are taking a, a, a look at it. What would what? Because it's someone who fled from justice. He hasn't faced it at all. As I said, we're taking a look at it. And then to, to push that line a little bit forward, forward, you all have not to use the phrase forgiven the leader of the opposition because you keep members on your side keep pushing that he is uh, been in jail that sort of thing you need to move on as well and you haven't from that point so how are you asking the public to move on from there <laughs> it's not for us to forgive um, there's nothing to forgive he has spent his time but it does not mean that um, um, you know in the banter of politics back and forth that sometimes some of our members would remind him but that's that's part of the hurly burly of, 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 of politics. Is that okay, Can we move on to another question? I have to, could we have another question? Okay, that's, that's fine. Okay, can we have another, because I really have to go now. The Creole Council of Belize and two youth representatives have been added to the People's Constitutional Commission following Monday's committee meeting inside the National Assembly. Prime Minister John Brasenia says no further representatives will be sought to sit on the commission. He made this announcement ahead of a joint release from the East Indian Council of Belize and the Corazal Organization of East Indian Cultural Heritage, expressing concern and alarm over its exclusion from the PCC. Notwithstanding the limitation, PM Brasenia says extensive consultations will be held across the country. We want to stop where we are. Um, we yesterday agreed to, to include two young people. There are two different organizations. Well, there's a group of, of people, I don't remember the name, of the different organizations of young people, of which um, uh, Minister Osha has asked them to name one. And then there's another one, I'm trying, um, Future Leaders of Belize or something in effect, I don't remember the exact. Young Leaders Alliance of Belize, right, thank you. Um, um, they have been an outstanding group, so we will be asking them also to name a person and then lastly we have agreed that um, um, that we although the the Creole Council of Belize is not very active um, they are asking that they want to put somebody in there so I guess we'll put somebody just because funny the issue is that everybody speaks Creole in Belize so we want to put them in there what is important is that the Commission is going to be have extensive consultations with everyone so if you are not in the commission, that does not mean that you cannot go and put your position, give your ideas, express your concerns and ideas as to what you want to see in how we can reform um, the constitution and make the um, make the make up of our, our democracy even deeper and stronger in our country. Yes, sir. Sorry? Diaspora and UEF. I think the, lead, the, the former leader of the opposition said he supports a diaspora rep. 
Um, they, they, can, they will always have access. They can come and speak to the commission at any time. PM Brasenia confirmed with reporters that former Belmopan Mayor Anthony Chinona has been appointed to chair the People's Constitution Commission. There are those who criticize the appointment as a conflict of interest given Chinona's history within the party. On the other hand, Prime Minister Brasenia defended Chinona's appointment, asserting that he best fits the criteria necessary to fill the post. I think he, everybody knows that Anthony Chanona is highly regarded, highly respected. I'm disappointed with the leader of the position um, when he wrote because when I called him, he immediately jumped at the opinion or at the, uh, of the idea and said that Anthony Chanona is a man of high regards, great respect for him, and would be the ideal person to chair the, the, the commission. Um, anybody you speak to that, that would want to be truthful, would, would regard Anthony Chanona as a person of integrity and somebody that would, probably, would, would do a good job as a chair of the, um, of, that, of the commission. Respectfully, respectfully, at the end of the day, somebody has to unpick. And I, as a prime minister, felt that I need to try to find the person that I believe can best be able to move this, 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 this process forward. And I believe that Anthony Chanona meets that criteria. When, when the UDP did something well, when, for instance, when he issued Citrus, Anthony Chanona had no problem in praising the UDP government and the UDP Prime Minister. So he is somebody that stands on principle. And, um, and that is why I believe that, we, um, that he would be the best person, in my mind, to be able to lead the Commission. There will be a change in the proposed date for the referendum on the legalization of cannabis in Belize. Initially, the referendum had been tentatively set for September 4th, in keeping with the process outlined in the Referendum Act. But due to concerns within the banking sector, the government of Belize decided to stall the cannabis and industrial hemp control and licensing bill 2022, which has already been passed through the lower and upper houses. Furthermore, according to Prime Minister John Brasenia, church leaders have voiced concerns over the $5 million price tag attached to the execution of a referendum given the current national economic challenges. You are the ones that tell me, you know, $5 million to spend at this time. Um, and then also some members from, from, the, from the churches kind of reach out um, um, indirectly um, to say, well, they're concerned about it. We had a meeting with them. And um, in the meeting, they agreed for us to be able to, to hold it, to stall it. What, what we have agreed in cabinet is that we're going to add, um, well, it's not an amendment because it's not a bill yet, it's not a law yet, but we're going to add a new clause into the bill to state, because the bill is ready to enact. Um, it's gone through the Senate. We are going on to bring it to the House to, to put an amendment to the bill to say that whenever, before this is enacted into law, we must hold a referendum based on what the churches have asked. That is one. But ironically, is the, the irony is the whole thing is that we were not ready to put this into law yet. Remember, we could have done this already. But um, a few weeks ago, uh, Minister Koye, in a meeting with the Banking um, Association, they were raising some concerns. I said, listen, if we legalize this um, in the United States and federally, it is still um, uh, an illegal substance and it could affect their um, corresponding banking uh, relationships that they have. So they were asking if we could put a pause on it until we could address this issue. So that is why we had it on pause because we have to address this issue. So even before we do go to that, we will have to address this. Once this is addressed, that we um, would not have a problem or find a way how we could deal with that, then we will then meet with, with the, with the, with the, with the um, inform well, the, the, um, the, the, the churches and everyone that now we will be calling um, the referendum. Prime Minister John Brasenia briefly weighed in on the controversial $7 million Social Security Board loan proposal to Pharmacy Express Limited. In a release yesterday, the private pharmaceutical company noted that it did not seek political or government influence to have the loan approved. On the other hand, the Ministry of Health and Wellness has placed on record its objection to the proposal. Here is what the Prime Minister had to say. 
Legally, remember that they are an autonomous body. And if I, if cabinet were to give a, a, a position right now, we'll be opening up ourselves to a, a lawsuit. And you know, there's a certain person chomping at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the bit to be able to come and sue us. So we cannot see anything right now. Um, but the Ministry of, of um, Health has expressed some, some concerns and they, I think, have written to, to, the, um, to Social Security. And, and, I, and I think other, other citizens will probably also express their concerns. This shows that the process is working. You start off, you put in your application, then there's the investment process um, group committee from within Social Security that makes a recommendation to the investment committee. The investment committee then passes on to the to the board. Then when the board agrees, then it is um, the, the informed the, the, the individual, the company that it will approve, but then it is publicized now to hear back from, from, from the people. Remember this was a part of the of the of the reforms that was done after the, the G7 when we were saying that, you know, we have to put tighter controls in our money. Coming up, the police department remains on high alert for potential drug planes passing through Belizean airspace. In 2012, Belize established a national sustainable energy strategy which includes the improvement of energy efficiency and conservation in Belize, among other objectives. With responsibility for energy, the Ministry of Public Utilities, Energy, Logistics and E-Governance is supporting the Belize Bureau of Standards to implement the CARICOM Energy Efficiency Labeling Scheme as a measure to provide consumers with pertinent information, ensure environmental quality and address climate change. At the outset, importers and suppliers can register their approved energy efficient appliances specific to refrigerators, air conditioners, CFL and LED light bulbs with a BBS for label consignments. The energy labels will serve as a tool for consumers to access information of the appliance's energy performance and cost savings potential, thus helping consumers to make informed energy efficient choices that will save on energy and therefore money. Mom, why did you buy that fridge? We bought this refrigerator because it is energy efficient, which means it uses less electricity and saves us money. And what are you gonna do with that extra money? I don't know, maybe we can get you something nicer for your birthday. Yay! And that is how the very hungry caterpillar got his energy efficient home. For more information, please contact Belize Bureau of Standards via hotline telephone number 0800-283-5587. Email us at bbs at btl.net or visit our website at www.bbs.gov.bz. This message is brought to you by the Belize Bureau of Standards, supported by the Belize Energy Unit and funded by the European Union. Respecting our national anthem whenever it's being played. We're blessed. We are free. We are proud. This is our beliefs. Respect it. Cherish it. Love it. As a parent, raising a family has its challenges. How many times have I told you not to play ball in the house? But growing up in a family has its challenges too. Oh, my, I can't take this no more! 
Let me share a little bit about what mine was like with you. Uncle, where do you get your information from? Wait up on Facebook, you show me. Guess what? Lisa got her period. But don't get me wrong, we had fun too. I like me that one, I can't wait to share more about Fui Family. BEL's customer rewards continue with more chances to win big this September. Customers who clear their account balances each month from January to August qualify to win one of four vacation packages. Two nights stay for up to five guests at Grand Caribbean. Two nights stay for up to five guests at Blue Zen. Two nights stay for up to five guests at Mahogany Bay. Two nights stay for up to two guests at Naya Resort. Vacation package can be exchanged for a $1,500 grocery voucher. Customers who clear their account balances for June, July, and August qualify to win one of 20 back to school vouchers from ANR Enterprise. Remember, to qualify, all your residential or social electricity accounts must have no arrears by August 31st, 2022. Prizes will be awarded to the account holder. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more information or call 0800 BEL Care. Win big in September with BEL's customer rewards. all young performers it's your turn to take the stage if you have the talent we have the show for you here's your chance to perform in belize's number one children's talent show summerfest 2022 singing dancing acting whatever your talent we want to see come audition on thursday august 4th and friday august 5th from 9 a.m to 2 p.m right here at channel 5 on coney drive Auditions are open to all children under 18 in any performing art. Don't miss your chance to be a part of the show. It's Summerfest 2022. The shooting murder of ex-gang boss Darian Banks on Monday was reportedly provoked by a shooting on Sunday night. And the shooting of Kenrick Walton just moments after Banks' murder have no doubt raised a level of anxiety among residents in the area. The shootings have also prompted the Belize Police Department to put measures in place in order to minimize retaliatory assaults between the feuding gangs, PIV, and Bacalan Crips. Commissioner of Police Chester Williams told the media today what they are doing to try and restore peace in Lake I. We have put in place certain mechanisms. I have given certain instructions for certain, certain things to be done. And uh, yes, the LIU is on the ground, along with the conflict, um, conflict officers, to see what we can do to bring some resolution to the, to the area. Um, it is not going to be easy, I must say, because we do know how these gang situations um, go, that there is always that tendency that they want to, to retaliate. And uh, we must do what we can to avert such retaliation. But since the Martins, um, the trio who were shot in the Martins era, we saw the, the shooting death of Darren Banks um, again in the Martins era, and we believe that that was a direct retaliation to um, what took place behind Complex. We all know Darren Banks' history. He was once a major player in the gang world. But of recent, he has not been a player in the gang world. He has, um, I believe he's, he, was, he, he is now an elder and uh, was living in the Martins era. But we know that, we know his previous connection and we believe that he was gone down because of that. And then we had the other shooting um, on Vernon Street. Again, we believe it was a retaliation. So we are on the grounds um, doing what needs to be done. Let me say that at this time we're not contemplating any state of emergency. We'll see how we can resolve the issue through mediations and uh, interventions. We, we know we have the multi-sectoral task force on the grounds and we try to use that as a first resort along with the police efforts to quell the problem. If on the longer run we see that the problem persists after mediation and intervention, then we look at our resorts to ensure we bring some, some calm to the St. Martin's area. 
Clearly, Belize City, because of its demographics with the various gang zones, is the most murderous municipality in the country. And the incidents of late have again put the Lake Independence area particularly under close police watch. But Commissioner Williams said he's not going to refer to the recent flare-ups in the old capital as an increase in gun violence per se, since Belize City is unique in that regard. I know we have all come to understand the dynamics of Belize City, that we do have occasions when we'll see a flare-up and then um, the police would mobilize and do what needs to be done in collaboration with the other agencies who are part of the multi-sectoral task force. And so it do occur from time to time. And then we see that after we address the issues, there is a lull and uh, we begin to feel comfortable. The, the Belize is so complex to the extent that you see gang free up in a particular area and then we go in to address that particular area, emphasizing our efforts in that area and then we see another flare up in another area. It's just how Belize City is. Um, you all know that particularly south side Belize City have that potential for gang flare up at any given time. It's so volatile that it takes one, one stupid person to do something stupid and then we have a gang flare up and that's exactly what we're seeing that took place in the Martins area over the weekend. While they were there socializing, we had the, the person who or persons who went there and uh, fired at them. Thankfully, it was not fatal, and now we see that there is a gang flare-up in the Martins area, which have been pretty quiet for quite some time. There have also been a number of crimes over the past few weeks in Dangriga. Commissioner Williams said that while there are gangs operating in Dangriga, the investigations into the recent incidents do not reflect that they were gang-related. In the first case with the stabbing, these are persons who were friends and they had some argument and uh, that argument eventually led to the stabbing death of one of the individual. Again, I don't see how policing could have prevented that from occurring. And in the second incident that occurred the um, night before, again, based on what investigators are getting, these persons were neighbors, they were friends, and uh, we don't know what happened between them that led to the shooting death of the, the young man. But investigators are on the ground, they're putting the pieces together, and uh, hopefully pretty soon we should be able to make an arrest. Um, in both instances in Dangria, we believe that we know who the persons are. We have heard of um, wet drop in the south. This was about two weeks ago. I can tell you that the police did found two packs of um, cocaine along the coast of, Dang, uh, of the Stankwick district. One was in St. Bight and the other was near Hopkins. So we know that there is a wet drop. But at this time we have nothing to indicate that um, these persons who are involved in the, the latest um, incidents in Dangriga are connected to any wet drop. But there could be a possibility. We still can't understand how friends could become enemies so quickly to the extent that one is taking the life of another. So it's something that we're looking at. But while there was a suspected wet drop a couple weeks ago in southern Belize, Commissioner Williams indicated that there were reports on Monday night of a suspicious plane also in the south. He said that police officers were on patrol in Dangriga just prior to the murder when their attention was diverted to a report of a drug plane in the area. When we had the fatal shooting in Dangriga, the police had just responded to information of a um, plane coming and the officers who were patrolling Dangriga town had to leave Dangriga to go and respond to the plane to the plane issue and so the town was left open with no police patrol and I guess criminals take advantage of the opportunity and uh, it happened but every single night we are out there responding to information of um, planes coming out of South America, coming our way, and we can't ignore it because we, we do not know if the planes are going to come to Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, or Mexico. So once we get information of the plane leaving South America, we always mobilize our teams to go into respective areas, and in the event that the plane comes our way, we're prepared to respond to it adequately. Earlier, we heard Commissioner of Police Chester Williams speak of the gang flare-ups in the Lake Independence area and the collaborative efforts directed at defusing further retaliation in that community. 
But another gang that has also been a headache for the police is the MS-13 gang originating from El Salvador. This gang, which is said to have growing numbers across Belize City, has been known to terrorize the residents in the communities where it operates. The most recent report was made in the Belama area just last week. William says the message to these Central American groups is that we are not a safe haven for them to settle and set up shop. We know the tendencies of these gangs from those areas and their habits is not what we want in Belize. And so, yes, we have been on high alert along with the immigration um, department along the borders. Um, likewise, within our districts and uh, um, within our villages and towns, um, officers have been on high alert. And we have asked the public to report to us any sighting of persons or persons who they may believe are affiliated with these gangs or are, or are gang members from Central America. And then we go in and uh, detain those persons, interview them to see exactly who they are. If they are from Central America and they are not in Belize legally, then we would refer the matter to immigration. But if they are Belizeans and have legal status and we believe that they are gang members, then we do our gang investigation to see if they will be enough for us to make an arrest. After the break, the Bar Association explains the Senior Courts Bill. Yo, this is Super G, the general, and I want to invite you all to the Belize International Music and Food Festival. That will be held for two nights, July 30th and the 31st at Sacachispas Field. It's probably insane, insane. Mr. Echipova, you, you, you. As you left my yard, y'all know why you come back. I am the guy in the You know, it's yours truly. King Room official. It's your boy Stick the Artist. My name is Brayton Williams. It's your boy Dando. Hi, my name is Deja. TLC baby. Blessings everybody. This is Original Coffee inviting you out to the Belize International Music and Food Festival in San Pedro. There will be me, many other artists. There will be enough music, no food. So come out, enjoy yourself. insurance you can request a quote renew a policy purchase a policy and even file a claim effortlessly with whatsapp here's how whatsapp the words get started to 670-8700 we will prompt you to select the service that you are interested in select the service and answer a few simple questions an RFNG representative will process your request and follow up with you when your transaction is completed. It's that easy. Skip lines and WhatsApp us. Remember, it pays to get it right with RFNG Insurance, a Rogue Company. Can't get a mannequin for this man, really? Well, son, if I never lend you the two thousand dollars to buy the kids' computer and the book, I may have the money for buy my mannequin. It's definitely better to borrow from the bank than from your friends or relatives. This way, all you owe is money. Would you like me to turn around? That would be good. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Take advantage of the back to school promotion currently being offered by the Belize Bank. Taking its name from the venerable father of the nation, the George Price Highway stretches 77 miles from Belize City to Benque Viejo. Originally built in the 1930s, this cross-country highway system is the artery that links Belize to Central America at the western border with Guatemala. That connection facilitates overland trade, supporting Belize's economic development. Winding its way across the scenic countryside, the George Price Highway, from Roaring Creek to Esperanza, has been fully reconstructed to meet international standards, with particular emphasis on road safety. A shorter and hassle-free commute is best enjoyed when everyone obeys the traffic laws. To reduce the number and frequency of road traffic accidents, it means that a seatbelt must be worn at all times, and the speed limit observed when traveling along the highway. 
It also means that pedestrians must use sidewalks and crosswalks where available. Buses should only board and discharge passengers at a designated bus stop. Road safety is everyone's responsibility. It begins with you. Make your summer better. Over $35,000 in cash and prizes with Smart Summer Sweepstakes. Here's how you can enter for a chance to win. Purchase any device, sign up for a smart postpaid, broadband, or VoIP plan, use $50 or more regular prepaid credit, do a SIM swap, or text to the short code. You win, 8946. And in the body of the message, enter the number of entries you would like to purchase. Each entry costs only 50 cents. Don't waste any time. You can be the winner of weekly prizes starting July 1st. All methods give you more chances to win. Airline tickets, overnight stays at numerous resorts, cash prizes, gift certificates, and much, much more. One lucky person will win the grand prize of a $10,000 shopping spree courtesy court and smart. Promotion ends September 16, 2022. So make your summer better by getting in the race to win with Smart Summer Sweepstakes. Smart, bringing people together. Calling all young performers. It's your turn to take the stage. If you have the talent, we have the show for you. Here's your chance to perform in Belize's number one children's talent show, Summerfest 2022. Singing, dancing, acting, whatever your talent, we want to see. Come audition on Thursday, August 4th and Friday, August 5th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. right here at Channel 5 on Coney Drive. Auditions are open to all children under 18 in any performing art. Don't miss your chance to be a part of the show. It's Summerfest 2022. The coming together of various branches of the judiciary to form what will hereafter be known as the senior courts succeeds a piece of legislation that was introduced in Parliament earlier this year. The proposed Senior Courts Bill will rescind the Supreme Court of Judicature Act and replace it with the Court of Appeal Act. This will seek to enhance the function as well as the administration of the Supreme Court to be renamed the High Court of Justice and the Court of Appeal of Belize. While Attorney General Magali Marin Young has gone to great lengths to explain the new configuration, the Bar Association also found it necessary to elucidate the changes. This morning, News 5 spoke with Vice President Hector Guerra following the release of a 15-page document put together by the association. Since the election of the new executive, um, we found it our responsibility to, to assist with educating the wider public so that you found that we've issued um, previously a paper on the bill that addresses um, the legalization of cannabis, um, the use of cannabis. And so in keeping with that mandate, we found it appropriate to issue a paper on the senior courts bill. Um, and that's how we, in keeping with that mandate, that's why we've published another uh, paper. Give us some details with respect to the document itself in terms of the system and how it sets out to work. Indeed. So what the proposed Senior Court Bill um, is intended to do is to redefine the role of the Chief Justice. The bill seeks to do this primarily by putting the Chief Justice in charge squarely of the direction and management administration of both the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. Um, I say primarily because there are other changes, um, but in the first instance, the Chief Justice is put in charge of um, the administration of the Court of Appeal um, and the Supreme Court. Um, other changes include the introductions of posts such as uh, a master of the Supreme Court, which will help in unburdening the court, for example, because that person will then be able to dispense with run-of-the-mill applications. Um, there's the introduction of a post for judicial assistants who 
will be key to assisting judges in carrying out necessary research, etc. Um, and so on a whole, when one considers these new posts, the end result that it is seeking to achieve is to uh, effect greater efficiency on the administration of justice and in primarily with the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. With the pending amalgamation of the court system, where will the legal fraternity fall within this new arrangement and what will its role be? The bar really is here to support the judiciary. Of course, we interact with the court system on a daily basis and so we see our role as one where we assist litigants to navigate um, through the new structure that will be put in place. And of course, um, in these formative stages, um, we've found our role to be one of providing information to the learned Attorney General who has been receptive to our views so far. Um, I don't want to forget to mention that what the bill is envisioning is also one where the Supreme Court will be renamed to a more appropriate name, um, which will now be called the High Court. Um, it's a more befitting, befitting name. Of course, the Supreme Court um, it belies what it really is because it's not our apex court. That, of course, is the Chief Justice. And so this new bill um, renames the Supreme Court as the High Court. There are other changes as well. For example, the bill is envisioning the creation of specialized courts, which will see um, certain judges being put in charge of areas where they have specialization. This, again, will assist with unburdening the court as the case load becomes ever increasing in a world where litigation is becoming common. While we were with the police commissioner, the media asked for an update on the progress of the Tribunal of Police Constable Alicia Trapp. She is the officer who went live on Facebook during the village council elections in Tea Kettle Village last month. Viewers will recall that Trapp had made allegations of assault against the era representative for Kion North, Julius Espat, during a verbal exchange on the day of the elections. But all that the police investigations have unearthed so far suggest that it was Trapp, not Espat, who had committed the assault. Espat has decided not to press charges and subsequently only demanded through his attorney that Trapp apologize. But the police department proceeded with its own investigation against the police officer on grounds that she violated the department's social media policy. Trapp also lawyered up and through her attorney, Erson Ellington, had warned the police department that if she was in any way penalized in a manner that suggests she was being victimized, that they would hear from him. Today, Commissioner Williams said the tribunal is about to begin. We're not going to be perturbed by the threats of uh, Mr. Ellington. Um, Ms. Trapp has been served with her disciplinary charges and that matter is before a tribunal. I am waiting to see now if Mr. O.J. would take swift legal actions. I believe it, if it were swift, the matter would have been before the courts already. But um, so far, we have not seen nothing from him in respect to that particular incident. And uh, the tribunal will commence and we see how it goes from there. The matter of the fatal traffic accident on the night of Sunday, July 17th, when 58-year-old Sherwin Leslie was knocked down and killed by a vehicle driven by the Prime Minister's driver also came up. As was reported on that night, Edwin Hill was driving on the Philip Golson Highway when between miles 24 and 25, his vehicle struck a man riding a bicycle. Today, Police Commissioner Williams told the media that there is nothing so far to suggest that Hill was at fault. Based on the statements we have recorded from IC witnesses, that it was not his fault, and rather the cyclist swerving in his lane, and uh, he could not have avoided the accident due to oncoming traffic. And you should know, Mr. Vasquez, that in cases like these where it is revealed 
that the driver is not at fault, then the driver is not charged. The matter goes to coroner's inquest. Sir, that is untrue, um, sir. That is untrue, sir. I have to stop you. That we know, sir. Everybody says the driver, the the bicyclist swerved into my lane. The man made a walk on the road. Everybody says that, and you proceed with charges and make them determine the court. No, That's standard, no, sir. no. It's a special no. treatment. I can give you several cases where persons who have been involved in accidents of this nature were not charged. Several. Um, and so it's not surprising to me that you would come with that. At the end of the day, you may have your agenda as to what you're trying to push and try to make it seem as if there's some degree of special treatment. But that is not the case. We have had many, many of these incidents, and I challenge all the media houses to go and do the research, and they are going to see. And as I said before, it is not something the police is going to make the determination on. We are putting the file together. The file will go to the DPP office and will be guided by the instructions coming out of DPP office where that matter is concerned. A woman falls to her death at the Copscombe Wildlife Sanctuary. But first, here's the weather forecast with data from the Belize Met Service. is lost and the days ahead look grim. We find ourselves looking for someone to shake things up, rescue us, and point us in the right direction. What if the one we've been waiting for has been here all along? Join us for our new series, Troublemaker, as we learn about a man who wasn't afraid to stand up for what's right to make this world a better place. computer and the book I may have the money for buy my mannequin. It's definitely better to borrow from the bank than from your friends or relatives. This way all you owe is money. Would you like me to turn around? That would be good. Turn on, turn on, turn on. Take advantage of the back to school promotion currently being offered by the Belize Bank. plastics. When talking about plastic, don't you always hear people say that this plastic or that plastic is biodegradable, eco-friendly, environmentally friendly, green or even ecological? Well, the truth is that these words and many others like them are often used to give the impression that the product is better for the environment. When shopping, the terms to look for are bio-based, compostable or environmentally degradable plastics because they are tested against specific standards to ensure that they are broken down with minimal impacts to the environment. But what does biodegradable really mean? To put it simply, it is the breakdown of something into water, carbon dioxide and biomass by the action of living organisms, usually bacteria or fungus. However, people call some plastics biodegradable, but they never fully break down because they still contain plastics made from petroleum or inorganic material. 
The plastics just break down into tinier pieces called microplastics, which then enter the food cycle through the ingestion by animals that people eat. Don't be fooled, check your labels. Click on the link below to see what you can do to help end the nightmare of single-use plastics. I'm Alison Castillo and now you know. Download the Smart Stream app on the Android Play Store and create your account to get access to movies and stream at home or on the go. Prepaid customers can purchase regular data packages or get a discounted rate on a special Smart Stream package by dialing 7737. Postpaid customers will be billed monthly. Never miss a movie again with Smart Stream. To vote for your favorite contestant, smart users will text the number of votes followed by a space and the contestant's number and send to smart code 5885. Each vote costs 50 cents. Voting ends on Sunday at midnight. Last night, we told you that UDP firebrand Delroy Kelvin has been expelled from his party. Well, Kelvin says he does not consider himself expelled from the UDP. He was accused of violating the party constitution with his sustained public bombardment of attacks on the party. The release refers to a slew of social media ads that Kelvin has produced over the last year, in which the leadership of opposition leader Shine Barrow is being called into question. But of course, Scott Kelvin views his campaign as nothing more than an attempt to restore the UDP to its glory days. And he claims to have the support of thousands of UDP members from across the country. So while a public apology is being demanded, Scott Kelvin told us in an interview today that the UDP owes him an apology. When we lost the election in 2020, there are a number of reasons why we lost the elections. And so the Belizean people sent us a strong signal. And for all of us do, who, are, who are part of the UDP in terms of the structure of the party and in terms of promoting the party, it is incumbent, has been incumbent upon us to ensure that we fix what went fundamentally wrong. And so when people like myself say certain things and write certain things, we do so because we want the party to get back to what the party stands for, to the foundational principles of the party. And when a leader behaves the way the current leader has been behaving, the moment he got into office to remove from the central executive of the party over half of the people who are sitting on the central executive, you start off in a way that is not fostering and forging the kind of unity that is needed for the party to be able to be its most, at its most formidable. And so what we need to do is to ensure that the party and the leadership of the party acts in a way that is good for everyone, not just the chosen few. On a daily basis, there are people who in the party talk to people like myself and say these are the things that are going wrong and that need to be addressed. And so when I utilize the mechanisms at my disposal to ensure that those issues are brought to the fore. It is not just for myself, it is, uh, it is for all that have the interests of the UDP at heart to ensure that the party gets back to what the party should be, which is a formidable force in opposition and preparing itself to be government once again. Will you apologize? When will you apologize? Apologize for what? I think the leadership owes me an apology for not listening to the people of the party. All right, so certain persons purport to have expelled me from the party. I don't consider myself expelled from the UDP. First of all, there's not a register that you can remove my name from. I currently don't hold any official position in the party. So I am a UDP because I say I'm, an, I'm a UDP and I act like a UDP. And I will remain a UDP. I will continue to act like what a UDP is supposed to act as. He has been away from Belize for over a year, reportedly to seek medical attention. 
but he is wanted by the state to face a charge of willful oppression contrary to the criminal code. The charge followed several allegations of abuse of power that were made against the former minister. When he failed to show up to face the charge, an Interpol alert was issued for his arrest. Now word is that the former UDP Minister of Works, Rene Montero, is back in Belize. Today, Commissioner of Police Chester Williams informed the media that the former minister is expected to be taken in by his attorneys to face the charge. Belize police do not work abroad. And uh, wherever Mr. Montero is, we do not work here. So to say that we're allowing, we're allowing him to be at large is an unfair statement. Um, we have communicated with Interpol and you all saw the red notice on Interpol where Mr. Montero is concerned. I don't know if you expect me to give directions to the Interpol person in the U.S. and tell them what to do, but that is not how it works. Notwithstanding that, I, am, I can report that just yesterday I was contacted by the attorneys for Mr. Montero and I was told that he is on his way to Belize and as soon as he, is, he arrived in Belize, he will, he will be taken in to us by the attorneys so that we can proceed with the matter against him. That being the case, the charge that the police have uh, uh, to, to levy against him, I was told by a, a seasoned attorney leaves a lot to be desired. Um, that charge will never stand up in court because it's a, it's a charge that you levy against a public officer, a former public officer, not a former minister of government. Um, I have read the piece of law in the criminal code, code that the DPP had directed that Mr. Montero be charged under. I am not a seasoned attorney, but you know sometimes seasoned chicken spoil, right? <laughs> so not everything was seasoned good, right? Um, and from my understanding of the law, the charge is appropriate. And um, we're going to see what happens in the court. It's not a matter for us to, to decide the guilt or innocence of Mr. Montero. It is a matter for the court. And so the seasoned attorney, if he is the one who is going to represent Mr. Montero, will have his day in court to demonstrate to the court why he believes the charges should not stick. And the DPP, who is going to prosecute the matter, will have her day to say why the charges are appropriate and why they should stick. 35-year-old Lucera Aguirre lost her life on Tuesday morning while visiting the Coxcomb Basin Wildlife Sanctuary. The resident of San Juan Village, Stan Creek District, was along with her family on the Tiger Fern Trail when she reportedly fell and was seriously injured while climbing one of the cliffs. Aguirre was immediately tended to by four trained personnel based at the sanctuary. They provided aid to the injured woman until a team of paramedics from the Southern Emergency Services arrived from Hopkins Village. In a statement issued by the Belize Audubon Society, which co-manages the park, it says, quote, while the ambulance was strategically positioned at the entrance of the trail, the BAS team, paramedic team, and volunteers helped to transfer Aguirre via a basket stretcher to it. Aguirre was then transferred via ambulance to the Southern Regional Hospital, but she was sadly declared dead on arrival by medical officials at the medical facility." Unquote. In the wake of the unfortunate incident, the Belize Audubon Society has advised its tourism partners and the public that the Tiger Fern Trail is closed until further notice. Just ahead, Belize is at the 2022 Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. The Social Security Board, in collaboration with the Labor Department, takes this opportunity to remind insured persons of the requirements for compensation when on sick leave. Any employee who has worked with an employer for at least two months is entitled to 16 working days of sick leave with full pay every year. This is how it works. Upon approval of a sickness or injury benefit claim by SSD, 80% of the employee's weekly insurable earnings is paid as a social security benefit and the difference in the employee's salary is paid by the employer. This is to ensure that the employee does not suffer any loss of wages when ill. After 16 days, compensation for sick leave is paid as a social security benefit only. Some conditions apply. This message is brought to you by the Social Security Board and the Labor Department. 
Social Security Board, safeguarding you, your family, your future. Get ready to tackle your yard with these lawn and garden products from Benny's. We have Scott's Turf Builder Seed and Fertilizer Spreaders for thicker, richer lawns and gardens. Quench your plant's thirst with an assortment of Axie hoses and nozzles. Trimming hedges? That's easy when using Axie Hedge Shears. Imacasa Rake and Vulcan Heavy Duty Lawn and Leaf Bags makes for easy cleanup. Keep away mosquitoes and other biting insects with the Burgess Insect Fogger. So get these lawn and garden products and more only at Benny's. Celebrating 75 years of quality and savings. In 2018, before I was um, diagnosed with um, cervical 4A, stage 4A cancer, first it was a, a size of a grapefruit that what the um, doctor told me. The kidney got enlarged. I couldn't do any um, chemotherapy because of the kidney. So I had to do only radiation. And I did my first session of 25. And then when, when I finished with the 25 um, sessions, I went back, she checked it, and she saw four centimeters. And I went back for the next 10 days. And after that, when she checked it again, she said, oh, it's like nothing, like nothing is there. It wasn't painful, but it's just a, it's a machine that you go under, and they have like a big, like a circular, and that goes five times. It will take five minutes, five minutes to do the radiation, one session. Then you go back the next morning, another session. Well, I personally will highly recommend Galenia Hospital because of its good services, friendly staff, the doctors, very caring. Well, I just want to thank them for everything that they have done for me, you know, the, the, the staff and the doctor, especially Dr. Jamie. And she was my doctor for the radiation. No? Dwayne Moody, Isani Cayetano, Marion Alley, Paul Lopez. Your News 5 Belize teams do whatever it takes, go wherever they need to go, so you can catch the story wherever you are, whenever you want, on whatever device. Channel 5 believes on television, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Because news is now everywhere, all the time. And so are we. Make your summer better. Over $35,000 in cash and prizes with Smart Summer Sweepstakes. Here's how you can enter for a chance to win. Purchase any device, sign up for a smart postpaid, broadband, or VoIP plan, use $50 or more regular prepaid credit, do a SIM swap, or text to the short code. You win, 8946. And in the body of the message, enter the number of entries you would like to purchase. Each entry costs only 50 cents. Don't waste any time. You can be the winner of weekly prizes starting July 1st. All methods give you more chances to win. Airline tickets, overnight stays at numerous resorts, cash prizes, gift certificates, and much, much more. One lucky person will win the grand prize of a $10,000 shopping spree courtesy court and smart. Promotion ends September 16, 2022. So make your summer better by getting in the race to win with Smart Summer Sweepstakes. Smart, bringing people together. The Commonwealth Games are being held this year in Birmingham, England, and a delegation comprising of 14 athletes has traveled to the UK to participate in cycling, triathlon, and athletics. The athletes arrived earlier today for the first multidiscipline game since COVID, in which 11,000 athletes will be participating. Known as the Friendly Games for the Commonwealth Countries, it is a very competitive event. News 5 spoke via Zoom today with the head of the Belize delegation, Giovanni Alamia. The Olympic Committee or the Camo Games Association, uh, we would be notified of which, which discipline, which sport we would be able to participate in. 
and we will write the national federations in Belize, notify them, okay, you have, for cycling, like for instance, you have five males, two females. Um, then we give them a, a deadline to submit what we call the long list, their wish list. It could be a hundred people, right? Then the, what, what they have done is they will have the national championships, they will have different events, and from there they'll wean it down to their select and what we did was we, we asked them to finalize that list, I believe it was two months ahead of these games. So then at least these athletes would know, okay, I'm going to these games. We sent them the routes, we sent them everything so that they can prepare for this event. So it's not a, a, week, a week ago they found out they're coming. The opening ceremonies is the 28th, triathlon competes the 29th. So that's hence the reason why we, we had them come earlier, so they get used to the weather, they have technical meetings, they have course familiarization prior to the event. So we didn't want them to reach two days before and, and jet lag and all of that. Um, so the, the, the athletes that arrived today, um, their first competition is a fourth, which is individual time trial. So we'll have three males and two females do the time trial. Athletics starts on the 5th and the 6th, and the 7th is the road race where we'll have the, the five, five gentlemen and the, the two ladies um, race. And closing ceremony. Let me as spoke of the importance of Belizean athletes participating in the Commonwealth Games, which can serve as a qualifier for other international sporting events. We, are, are, we firmly believe that we need to give our athletes access to these events. Yes, you know, it, it would be great if we could make it to the semis in track or make it to the finals or finish a road race with the puck, you know, um, or even finish with triathlon and have, have a good finishing time. Because now, if you were to look at cycling, most of the best cyclists in the world our Europeans are from common, Commonwealth countries. The same thing with triathlon. Some of the, the, the top 10 in the world are from the UK, from New Zealand, from Australia, and they're all here. Right? The same thing now you're looking at, at track and field. Now you have last week the world championship. The Jamaicans broke so many records. They swept the podium. They will be here. Right? So this is their opportunity to race against the best in the world. And for us, we believe this is an opportunity to show the kids in Belize that by being involved with sports, you, this will open up these doors. So you have these opportunities and it's for you to take advantage of that. The Belize Camping Experience has for years been working with young people across the country, teaching them life skills and helping them develop a relationship with the church. It provides a space for youth leaders from various municipalities to converge on the campgrounds before going out to work with their peers in communities across the city. This week, approximately 37 young persons are engaged in a camp on Jasmine Street. News 5's Dwayne Moody reports. Over on Jasmine Street in the St. Martin's area, young people are engaged in a summer camp being held by the Belize Camping Experience. These communities really need not just a program, but really, we really need to come here to love on these kids, to build relationship with these kids because they, if the heart changes for them to make good choices, good or bad, 
Then after when the program is finished, then they actually have something to hold on, right? And we, that's Belize camping experience. We really believe that as Belizeans, we can really be a role model for these children, especially in these neighborhoods. Since June 12th, youth leaders from across the country are being housed at the camping grounds off the George Price Highway, where they have been developing various life skills and sharing in their experiences. After two weeks with the senior team at the Belize Camping Experience, they are then taken into communities across the city as youth leaders to engage with other young people about the importance of choice. There are some of the activities that we do, we really tell the story of a Belizean that is doing something good in the community, right? So that they can see that it's possible to, to do good. And then from there we have a lot of lessons and we have a lot of good morals, just Christian character that can build up so that they can make good decisions. But every activity needs to go along with the lesson and the lesson for this whole summer or the team is to make your choice. Youth leaders Ajan Ashby and Helena Gwenther say that the invaluable lessons learned are being shared with their peers whose realities, including dealing with trauma, are similar. When you be a leader, you have to change some type of way you, you lead. And if you don't want to change, you can become the person people see you, uh, you want to become in life. What is it that you want these young people that you're working with to take away? That, that we are serving one person and the person is God. And no matter where we go or how we serve or how we live our life, he is always there for us. But so that is the message for them that God is there for them to help them out. I would never have thought as a young child that I would be given this opportunity to share the love of Christ that other people similar in similar ways, they share their love with me and to just camp with these kids and to do songs and dances and all of the games together and just love them and just hug them and just sing with them. It's just a wonderful experience. It's changed my life so much and like the, I have had kids that they inspired me to do better in my walk with God. For the campers from the St. Martin's area, they are excited about the activities they have been engaged in since Monday. I think you yeah, are good for me to study, help people to like say we help everybody in the city to get smart, we help them to like read our thing. What's the best part of the camp for you? Like they tag our on the phone yeah. and sometimes we like read book and play. The theme for this year's camp is Make Your Choice. Dwayne Moody for News 5. And that's the news. Tonight's broadcast is available in both text and streaming video at channel5belize.com. You can also connect with us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news5live. I'm Anne-Lyn Apollonia. Thanks for joining us. And from all of us here at News 5, please remember to wash your hands, keep your social distance, and stay safe. Good night.